Freedom, the ability to do what I want to do. Liberty, the condition in which I can do or say things freely. Those are the definitions for freedom and liberty in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. In the 1700s, the group of colonies that banded together to form the United States did so under the cause of freedom. Similarly, the French Revolution took place, overturning the monarchy and building a republic for the cause of liberty. Freedom and liberty are characteristic values within Western culture. They predate these revolutions, but really came into the forefront through these revolutionary wars. While I'm a person from Western culture, this value of freedom and liberty make a great deal of sense to me. And, and they're the foundation for so many other things in our culture, including things like civil rights. But I think also that freedom and liberty need to be understood in context, and we often miss that context. For instance, in the United States, we talk about liberty and justice for all. That's the phrase we use, liberty and justice. We think of, the, of justice as having to do with the justice system, with laws and courts. But Merriam-Webster Dictionary reminds us that justice is about fairness. It's about equity among people. It's about respect. So that when we think of freedom, we also need to think about equity and respect. So it isn't just my personal freedom, but it's also what's happening with others, what's often called the common good. That sense is also conveyed through the French uh, perspective of connecting liberty with fraternity. So it isn't liberty for its own sake, but liberty within the, within the context of lives living with other people. All of the great spiritual traditions of the world understand the importance of this interconnectedness of people. And that's something we don't talk a lot about in Western culture. All of the great traditions have in some way conveyed to us an understanding of what we call the golden rule, to love one another. It's sometimes said in terms of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or it's sometimes put in terms of don't do to anyone else what you don't want them to do to you. In Islam, it's really codified in the understanding of charity. And in other traditions, like in indigenous traditions, it's understood in terms of the interconnectedness of everything, of the whole cosmos, and living within that balance. So that interconnectedness, that sense of loving one another, of assuring justice and respect, of the common good, of compassion, all of those are different aspects that come to us from the spiritual traditions, and they inform freedom and liberty. I think that's important for us to understand that freedom and liberty are always in context, and it, that context has to do with our lives together on the planet. We sometimes think, mistakenly, that we are independent of each other, that we can be people who live on our own without interconnection. So just because we're not very social people doesn't mean that we don't depend on each other. Yes, we depend on the people who grow our food and who ship it to our grocery stores and the frontline workers who work in the grocery stores. But we also depend on global supply chains to make sure products are made and that, that the way of life we're used to is available to us. And right now, as I'm making this video, there are, there are difficulties in the global supply chain that are causing people to understand how interconnected we really are. That interconnection is a key part of our spiritual traditions. One of my favorite spiritual writers from the 12th century, Hildegard of Bingen, 
used the image of a web. She talks about the web of the universe. And she understood that everything in the universe is interconnected. But she goes further than that. Not only are we interconnected, but we have the ability to pull on that web. And when we pull on that web, when we exert our freedom and liberty in a way that doesn't account for others, we pull other things off balance. She refers to that as injustice. So that we create injustice, we create imbalance when we overexert freedom and liberty. And I think that's an important concept for us to reflect on. When is it that we're taking more than our share? When is it that we demand our way so that others do without? When do we act in ways for ourselves that are unfair to others? You know, it's important in terms of leading a spiritual life to do spiritual practice, meditation, or whatever it is that we do. But it's also important to review our values and what those values mean about the way we live. Because fundamentally, the spiritual dimension of life integrates with everything else in our life and shapes the way we live. And when our values, our guiding principles, are out of kilter, we're not living in a way that supports justice, that shows respect to others and works toward equity and fairness among all people. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and leave me some comments about ways that you understand spirituality, your spiritual tradition and practice, as informing you to be able to live well in balancing your personal freedom with the common good, with justice for all people. Thanks. Have a great day.